Whistle My Lad came around through Richard Burke. We've written several scripts together, um, most of those in the thriller genre. We needed something that was a smaller project and the plan was to make this film and use that to take us on to do the feature. Richard had written the piece based on his personal experiences growing up in Bampshire as a youngster and he was very passionate about the, the location. It became another character in the film. We decided to film here in Gardenston and Crivy because this is an indelible part of my youth. I came here at the age of 14 and fell in love with the place and at the same time I fell in love as well. And the story is about love and you can't split the two things apart. And it's such a wonderful location. It has a special feel about it. There's a special spirit to this place that became a part of the story. Sometimes as a writer, things come to you from all of your experience throughout your life. And these two characters, as they grew in my mind, uh, became very, very real. And, and they were in love. The story has an impending storm in it. And in 1911, I feel that people then were in a golden age of the, of the British Empire. And uh, I wanted to show the parallel that was going on between these two young people and the love they felt for each other before the storm came and destroyed their love. A wise one. Oh, could you? Well, the uh, Hakon, the DP, uh, wanted to make classic point of view in terms of photography. Simple, it's beautiful and still, you know. We decided to shoot in Red Epic because it's the best camera in the market probably now. I mean, it's a bit more heavy, just a bit more than a DSLR, you know, and, and the quality you get is just... It makes that you can create things that you cannot do with other cameras, you know. The weather is, has been one of the challenges. We had wind, we had rain, we had snow, we had everything. The, the most enjoyable thing is definitely just getting the light set up, getting the camera, action, and just seeing how everything goes. We cannot risk the wrath of our families anymore. Agnes, has something happened? Did he do this to you? How could he do Don't. this? Um, being a costume designer for film uh, means that I have to know exactly what everyone would have been wearing uh, in the, the period at which the, the film is set. Um, I also have to know why they would have been wearing that, um, when they would have worn that, because of course people in the early 1900s would have had an everyday outfit. Uh, and an outfit for going to church in, um, as well as work clothes. So I have to understand kind of the complexities and in some cases the rules of social dress. Um, and I then have to go to the director and the production designer and say, this is what I think it should be like, what do you guys think? At which point they either turn around and say, yes, brilliant, awesome, go with it. Or mm, actually, we would quite like it if we could do something entirely different. Um, with Whistle My Lad, uh, as a period drama, we've tried to be as accurate as possible, um, but there, we have taken a couple of artistic licenses. One of the costumes has been made, uh, but it had to be made uh, twice. Uh, and again, this is Agnes's uh, Sunday dress, because uh, it had to be made specially because uh, the director had such a specific idea in his head, and also because she has to wade through rock pools at the end. So I had to have something um, which I was happy getting covered in salt water. All other costumes from the film have been either loaned to us very, very kindly by Pit Lockery Festival Theatre or with incredible uh, generosity from the Bucky uh, Fishing and Heritage Centre who have allowed us to have authentic period costumes which are also connected to the area in our film and that is something really, really special because it means that uh, in a way the, the, costume, the, the outfits are living again. Um, and I think that's, that's something really lovely to be able to do. 
and yeah, seeing the extra spaces when they get to try them on is also very special. Well, we were lucky enough to have the RSNO, the Royal Scottish National Orchestra, recording the music for Whistle My Lad. It's a huge, huge coup for us, uh, for our film, because uh, the whole thing came about from a meeting with Mick Elliott at uh, an RSNO sponsored dinner at the Markleff in Aberdeen. And um, we met Mick there and he described what we were doing with the film. Uh, and Mick immediately took to, uh, to the passion and enthusiasm that we had for the project and displayed a really strong entrepreneurial spirit by, by going with us and supporting us throughout. Well, I think the, the theme uh, to the film is written by John Logan uh, and it started its life as a, as a beautiful tune called Tyree that he brought uh, to, the, to the St Andrews concert um, a few years ago. Um, to see if Ali and I liked it and we, we fell in love with it and basically that was it. We played it a few times during the uh, St Andrews concerts that we, we, we did every year uh, and then when John got involved in this project um, he gave me a shout and said will you come and, and do, the, do the business. At the first meeting with the RSNO uh, Mick Elliott brought John Logan along. Uh, John had previously been a um, French horn player with the RSNO and had moved on to become head of brass at the conservatoire. And uh, during the meeting, John came out with this, uh, with this piece of music, Tyree, that he'd written before. And uh, he forward, after the meeting, forwarded the music to us and we were spellbound by it, absolutely spellbound. So John used that loosely as a basis for the music for Also My Lad and developed the score from the final edit that we gave him. And the score is magical, absolutely magical. I was invited along to the shoot of the film. I, I spent about three or four hours up there uh, in the Banffshire coast and um, I could just hear the melodies that I've written and looking at the waves coming in and I thought, oh, that's just, mm -hmm. it's meant to be, it's meant to, yeah. sort of, to marry into that sort of thing. Um, I remember we'd sit, sitting around the piano and put, you know, the, I had the film in front of me and just playing away to it. How about this? How about that? How about that? And then we'd get something and say, great, that's it. So it was nice to actually have the confidence that somebody else was liking what you were actually going to do, rather than doing something to, here it is, you know, so it's been, it's been nice actually being in right at the beginning, where that seed was for it, for it to mm -hmm. actually, actually come through. As far as the film score is, 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 is concerned, it really needed to have that little bit of a, you know, a, a folk voice and, um, I mean, we hear Phil playing the whistles, you know, with the orchestra and getting that balance right and, and, and making sure that, you know, at certain bits there is more orchestra than folk, folk instruments mm -hmm. and at other bits there's more folk instruments going through yeah. um, rather than all sounding exactly the same. Mm -hmm. It's a film score and it's meant to be, have an orchestral, orchestral feel to it but with that, just that little subtlety yeah. of, of this sort of Celticness uh -huh. come through. It's the first film I've done, but I've done a lot of theatre before with my mum's drama school. I didn't realise how different film would be from theatre. It's completely different in how you get so much time to work on theatre, but with film you've basically just got to do it right there and then. Character building was actually okay, it kind of came kind of naturally I guess because I am the youngest of two sisters so it's the same relationship as Beatrice just have with Agnes so that kind of came across. My most challenging part is, well it was getting all the right reactions to all the stuff with, that was happening like at the end where Agnes is jumping off of rocks. I've just enjoyed the entire experience, like all of it, it's just been an amazing experience. The relationship between me and Agnes was visualisation. We didn't obviously have you know, years to, or months to talk about it. We had you know, a very short period of time together. So we had to use visualisation and uh, building memories together. So we went to the likes of the cave, which is a massive part of the story. We went and sat together and we were, you know, what did that mean to us? What, what does this place mean to us? What do, you know, talking about, even walking through Crivy, which is meant to be our town, just walking through and saying, oh, that's old Mary's house, you know, and we had both had a story about old Mary, or, you know, and just kind of building the memories together. Thus, you know, we both lived in that town and really kind of had a relationship with that town, but thus then gave us a relationship together, um, which was really quite fun and uh, really quite good to build a character that way, I think. Playing someone that was 
dead was rather strange. In fact, really strange. I didn't really have to act. I just had to pretend I was like asleep. Uh, the weirdest thing was that um, lovely Kaylee put um, some seaweed on my face. So that was, that was new and strange. I was up at five o'clock in the morning getting prosthetics on my face, um, which is again a new experience. It's been wonderful. Everything kind of, you, you know, turn a corner, a new experience, which has been fantastic. And uh, the prosthetics were amazing. It looked like a, a zombie, as people keep saying. My pet hate <laughs> is getting sand on my body and they had to smear it all over my face. So that wasn't the greatest thing. But again, it was really quite easy to act because all I had to do was lie down. It's just been amazing. The whole kind of cast and crew have been great. And uh, it's, just, it's just been a, a great fun experience. That's what I can't get across to everyone. Like, you know, when we're not on screen and not having to be serious, you know, we're just having a, having a, a laugh and just chilling out and annoying people and kind of acting like kids. It's been fantastic. So yeah, I, I, it's been amazing fun. It doesn't feel like work. It should, I probably shouldn't admit that, but it doesn't feel like work at all. I'm very, very pleased. I think we've got a wonderful crew, a wonderful location, a fantastic uh, cast, and, uh, and, and what I hope is a great story. And, uh, and to tell this story and to work with these people has been a real privilege.